Hello and welcome to Skipping Excel. My name's Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. Excel is used for all sorts of things like budgeting, reporting, bank recs, and more. And sometimes it's simply used as a bridge between two applications. Like you export something, you clean it up in Excel, and then you need to import it into another system. As an example, maybe you export transactions from an e-commerce system into Excel, clean it up, and then upload it into an accounting system like QuickBooks. And when you use Excel like this as a way to sort of transport data from one system to another, you may be able to skip Excel altogether. Wait, what? I'm going to share all the details for how I took a 30 minute a day process down to 15 minutes a day, then down to five minutes a day, then down to zero minutes a day. All right. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So I'd like to start by showing you the very manual version of this process. This was the process that was taking me about 30 minutes a day. Basically, I would get a sale in my e-commerce system and I would need to get that into my accounting system, which happens to be QuickBooks. So the first sort of iteration of this process that I was able to get from 30 to 15 to five to zero started by a copy paste. When a sale would come in, I'd open up my e-commerce system. I would basically then copy and paste, right? And then I'd go back over here, do another copy, do another paste. Cruise back over here, do a copy, do a paste. And then I would click on save. And that would usually take me around 30 minutes a day, of course, depending on the number of sales. I quickly grew tired of that, so I decided to streamline this a little bit. So the next iteration was doing things in batches at the end of the day. So let me show you what that looked like. All right, so I figured I could do this in batches at the end of the day, and this cut my time in half. Maybe it would take me about 15 minutes a day. And what it looked like is at the end of the day, I would log into my e-commerce system. I would download all the orders into a CSV file. And then I need to get it into the format required by QuickBooks to be uploaded. So QuickBooks provides a sample format that's required uh, so that we can upload it into QuickBooks. And so this would require some amount of manual cleanup. For example, I'd have to remove rows that I didn't need. I'd have to remove columns that I didn't need. I'd have to get the formatting just right. I'd have to move the columns in the right order and things like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly reformat this. I'll speed the video up so it doesn't take so long to watch. Okay, now that I've done all that cleanup, now we would go to QuickBooks and do an import. So now that our data is formatted in the correct format, we would just browse to our CSV file, click next, walk through the import wizard, and those sales records are then imported. That was taking about 15 minutes a day, which was a vast improvement. I saved half the time, but then I wanted to optimize this process even more. So the next improvement that I made was using Power Query to do the cleanup instead of manually doing the cleanup. So let's do that part right now, because I was able to use Power Query to get this process down to five minutes a day. So the first step is to, to pull in the CSV file that I've downloaded through Power Query and clean it up on its way in. Get data from file from CSV. CSV. So we select the file and click import. And then I click transform. What I could simply do is do those cleanup steps once and then Power Query will apply those same steps to any future files that I download and save in the same folder with the same file name. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up so it doesn't take as long. All right, once I have all the columns all ready to go, then I can just close and load to. I select table, existing worksheet, and I click OK. Now the data is in the format needed by the QuickBooks import, so I simply do a file, save as. I save it as a CSV file and click save. And then back in QuickBooks, that's the file that I would browse to and complete the upload process. Now, the reason using Power Query saves time is because once I've set up the query, all I have to do in future periods is click refresh. So I don't have to manually do that cleanup anymore. So let me show you what that looks like. So what I do is I would export a new file. I would save it to the same folder and use the same file name as before. And then all I have to do is right click and refresh. 
and Power Query does its thing, and now it's cleaned up, and now I can upload it. So by using Power Query, instead of manually cleaning up all the columns, I was able to take a 15-minute process down to five minutes, okay? So that was great, and I used that for a while. And then I discovered some tools that helped me take this from a five-minute-a-day process down to zero minutes a day. Now I'm gonna talk about the tools that helped me get it down to a zero-minute-per-day process. The best-case scenario is that the two systems have a direct integration. And since there's no direct integration with my two applications, I had to get an intermediate step, okay? And that intermediate step is Zapier. Zapier can connect many different types of systems that don't have a built-in integration, and it's amazing. But the problem is my e-commerce system didn't have an integration with Zapier. <laughs> Since there's no integration with my e-commerce system in Zapier, however, I had to have another intermediate step, and that is mail parser. So the flow basically looks like a transaction is booked in my e-commerce system. The e-commerce system sends a confirmation email out to the student and over to mail parser. Mail parser then parses the email and pulls out the value fields and sends them over to Zapier. Zapier then takes them, and once it's in Zapier, it's game over, because what we can do there is we can push this almost anywhere. And so in this case, I pushed a copy of the transaction into QuickBooks Online, but it could have just as easily been virtually any other online application. All right, once you've created your mail parser account, we create a new inbox, and here we create a descriptive name. I'll call this uh, e-commerce sales. And for the notes, I'm basically going to say e-commerce system transactions send to Zapier for QuickBooks. All right, then I click save. All right, and what we get at this point is a new mail parser email address. And what we have to do is send the first sample over to this email address. All right, so I've gone over and I forwarded a email here. And now mail parser says that we got the email and now we can add some parsing rules. All right, and mail parser is going to try to look at the email and highlight what it discovers as data fields that we might want. So in this case, as we examine this, it looks like it guessed pretty well. Like these are all the fields that I need to send into QuickBooks. All right, so since this looks pretty good, I actually wanna start with this template, but then we'll do some customization so you can see how the rules actually work. So I click start with this template. Let's start with the rules. Now basically what it's saying is these are some rules that pick out these particular fields. So it's basically each data field has its own set of rules that it uses to, to locate that specific field within the email. So if we want date, which in this case we do, we'll leave it. If we have something that we don't need, we can just click delete. So we don't need that. We do need this. We wanna bring in the name, address, city, state, and zip, and country. We don't need phone for this, so we're just gonna delete that. We want the email, and we want the grand total. So we don't need subtotal, and we don't need tax. Okay, but let's say we wanted to pull something out of the email that the template doesn't pull in. What we do is we just click add a new parsing rule. Then we just give it a list of rules that it uses to find that particular field within the email. So the first thing we do is tell it where it can go to find this specific piece of information. In this case, it's the body of the email. And then we can click HTML or plain text. The system does HTML, so I'll click that. Okay, so basically the idea is we need to set up rules that enable mail parser to read the text, and then pull out the value that we're looking for. So in this case, if I scan through the original email, I scroll down and I see this is the course that was purchased, and then there's a dash, and then there's this product code, and then there's the quantity and the amount. Let's say I wanted to pull out the product code. Here's how we might set up a rule like this. First, I would look for something that's consistent, like I need to look um, under the line that starts with product, because it always starts with product and then it gives me the product. Or I could say, let's find everything that's above the word subtotal, you get the idea. But in this case, we would set up a series of rules. So first, let's say we eliminate everything above the word product. There's a bunch of rules. So for example, we can find the starting or, or end position. We can remove lines, blank spaces. Uh, we can replace. We can find entities. We can extract tabular data and, and more. So there's an extensive set of tools. So in this case, we want to find everything that comes after the word product. So we click add text filter and find start position. We want to find everything that is after product and then a space and then a vertical bar 
Okay, and then we, we apply another filter. We apply as many filters as we need. Okay, and let's find, let, let's get rid of everything after the word subtotal. So I'm going to define the end position as everything after the word sub dash total. Okay, and this is looking better. Okay, now what we notice is there is a dash. So why don't we find everything that's after the dash? So we go here, set start position, and we're gonna do a space dash space. Okay, that's looking good. And now let's set the end position as the vertical bar. So define end position as text after space, vertical bar space. Okay, we're getting pretty close. And now I think one more filter ought to do it. Let's go ahead and define the end position. Space, vertical bar space. And then I think we got it. Okay, and then we can click OK, looks good. And we're just gonna call this the product code and validate and save, okay? And that is an example of how you would go through starting with a template to parse the email and it parses the email like one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, all these times, each time pulling out a specific unique value. And so some of these were created automatically. It's got really good built-in rules. And for product code, I had to define the series of rules specifically. So it'll take a little while to kind of learn how to use those rules, but that's the basic idea. We just keep applying a series of filters until we get to exactly the data that we want. Now let's see if it worked. Let's go to emails. We'll open up our email. And so these, these yellow highlighted values are the values that it's going to find, uh, including this product code here. So what we would do is we would set up our e-commerce system to send a copy of all purchase confirmations directly to the mail parser inbox. Mail parser does its thing, it brings up these values, and then the next step is to send this over to Zapier, which will then send this data over to QuickBooks or any other Zapier connected application. So once you've set up your account with Zapier, we're gonna log in, we're gonna create a Zap. And the first thing we need to start with is a trigger app. And this is the thing that initiates this workflow, AKA this Zap. In our case, it was Mail Parser. So we search for our app, Mail Parser, and we select it. Here we're gonna choose an event, which is a new email parsed. Click Continue. We select our account and click Finish. Now we need to select the inbox. So the inbox was e-commerce sales, that was our nickname, and we click continue. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is test the trigger, and this is gonna test the connection between mail parser and Zapier. So we click test trigger, and sure enough, it's telling us that it found this information, which is beautiful, okay? Because here's all the fields that we had set up in mail parser, including our product code, okay? So now we click continue, and now what we do is send this data to the next place. And this place could be any number of thousands of different Zapier supported applications. In our case, it's gonna be QuickBooks, but it could easily be, we could set up to an Excel doc, we could send this to Active Campaign. we could send this to any number of places. In our case, we're gonna send it to QuickBooks. So we select QuickBooks Online, and then we can choose from a variety of different events. So what do we want QuickBooks Online to do with this data? Create a bill, create a credit memo, create customer expenses, create product service, journal entry invoices. And so you can see there's lots of different things supported, including finding accounts and customers. In our case, we simply wanna create an invoice. Then we click continue. We select our account and continue. And now Zapier is saying these are the fields in QuickBooks which data that you're getting from mail parser do you want to map to each of the fields that are needed by QuickBooks? Okay, so we select customer and custom, and then these are the fields that come from mail parser, and we can show all options. So what we would say here is we want the mail parser field called name to go into the QuickBooks field called customer. And then we just go through this list. So for email, we want this, and we just pick and choose. For the billing address, we want uh, this, and then a new line, and then city, comma, space, this, space, and this. Okay, if we had terms we could pick it, what do we want the invoice date to be? We're gonna have it be the date received, and you have various choices there. 
We could pick a due date if we want and, and all of these different items. So in this case, our product is this product code and we could populate it with the quantity. We could parse that out of the email if we wanted to. And then our total amount, we're just going to get from here. We could optionally define a message and all these additional fields. Feel free to explore this depending on what you're working on. And then we click continue and then we test the action. And then once you have everything set, you can click publish zap, publish and turn on. What's going to happen is when an order is placed in our e-commerce system, a confirmation email is going to be sent directly to the mail parser inbox. Mail parser is going to do its thing instantly. It's going to filter through, find those fields, send them to Zapier. Zapier is going to catch that data and then it's going to add it to QuickBooks. So that's going to all be automatic. And now guess what? That process went from 30 minutes to 15 to five <laughs> to zero. Now I do want to let you know a couple things about Zapier. First of all, it's an amazing application. Second of all, it's a big place with lots to learn. So I did basically an intro, very high level, but I want to let you know that it can connect to many different apps and there's a lot of stuff to explore. So if you want to get into it, get into it, check it out and just realize that it's a big place with lots of stuff to explore. Zapier has saved me countless hours because of all the automations that I have. And what's great about Zapier is they have tons of guidance built right into the app. So you can just point and click and use no code to connect all these online applications. All right. Awesome. Well, hey, listen, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you like seeing the details of this journey of taking a process from 30 minutes to 15 minutes to five minutes to zero minutes, skipping Excel and getting the computers to do our work so we don't have to. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University.